Today, I'm going to talk about my favorite mechanism in Cryptid. Cryptid is a deduction game where you are putting together a map uh, specified by the game. It's not a randomized thing. You're putting together as the game tells you to. There are a, bu a bunch of these cards that say, okay, here's the layout. Here's where you're going to put the, the pieces, like these pieces, um, these towers, and here are where you're going to put these tiles. And then that little card tells each player to look up a specific line in their rule book. So they're, they're these, uh, not really rule books, kind of guidebooks. Each player has their own unique guidebook and there are all these different rules in that book and one rule applies to each player. So for example, your rule might be that, um, that the, uh, you're looking for the monster and it might be, my rule might be the monster is on a water hex. Um, so you can see this water hexes. And then another player's rule might, will be something different. It'll be not related to water at all. It'll be the, the monster is on a hex with an animal. Um, or the monster is one space away from a forest hex. And the game makers brilliantly have aligned all these rules scaled by player count. So it, it depends on your player count what your rules will be and what the map configuration is. So that every game, there is only exactly one overlapping location that meets all those rules. The monster is always only at exactly one location. Um, and it's, it's almost mind-boggling how they did it. I, I, I am blown away by how they were able to come up with that combination and always only have one. And it is crucially important that you only have one location for the monster. During the game, you're just asking questions to other players. You're, gonna, you're saying, could the monster be here? And you're asking one specific player that question. And that player either has to say yes or no. Um, but the, and you can, you can watch a rules video to see how, the rest of how the game works. But I wanted to mention that because the game has an opportunity for players to feel sneaky. And I like when games give players that chance to feel a little sneaky. And that is uh, when... So if, you, if I ask you if the monster could be like on this hex and you say no, then I also have to put down a cube on the board somewhere on the board to show them, to give them an answer no to my clue. Um, so if my clue is that uh, the monster is on the water, then I have to put down a cube somewhere that is not water somewhere on the board. Um, so they, they have this rule because you're, they're, they're trying to encourage you to guess correctly, to make really good guesses and, and guess correctly, uh, and, and to kind of help narrow down the, the rules for where this monster could be. Um, and so if you don't answer correctly, then, then you have to give away some information to other players. You have to put down that, that no cube. But I love that when you put down that no cube, you are trying to be as sneaky as possible. You're trying to give away as little information as possible. So for example, in the game that we played, one of our players had a rule. I think his rule was that he needed, uh, that his rule was that the monster was one space away from a water hex, but he was very sneaky about it. And whenever he put down a no cube on the board, he would put it on a, uh, a marsh space, one of these black spaces. And so throughout the game, he's kind of trying to tell us, oh, you know, this is, uh, the monster is on a marsh space. You should think that. This is what I'm trying to tell you. But that wasn't right at all. Like he was, he was trying to hide his actual clue. And I love that the game gives you that opportunity to be sneaky. You basically, on the back of the, each rule book, it shows you what all the, um, the possible location clues could be. And so you can use those to really trick the other players, even as you are always telling the truth. You're always telling the truth about, about where the monster could be. But... Uh, the places where you put those clues can really uh, lead players astray a little bit um, as, you, as you kind of show them, oh, th this, is, this is what I'm trying to tell you, but really you're, you're telling them something else. Um, it's a little hard to describe. I think you might even have to watch a rules video to truly understand how Cryptid is played. And I highly recommend you give it a try. It, it, is, it really is a, a, a masterpiece of, of deduction design. Um, I was blown away by it, and I can't wait to play it again. That's Cryptid. If you can think of any other games like this, uh, and there are other games. There, there are clue-like games. There's Mystery of the Abbey. I've heard that uh, Tobago is kind of similar. But, um, but I haven't seen a game do it this well and make me want to come, get it back to the table as quickly as possible um, as, as Cryptid has. So yeah, I'd love, to, I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you have a different favorite mechanism in Cryptid, or if you can think of another game that does something like this that lets players be a little bit sneaky, even as they are always telling the truth. Um, I'd love to hear about that in the comments. Thanks.